And once again, welcome back to Young at Heart. I'm here with author Carolyn Schneider, and she's written quite an interesting book, and it is called The Road to Elko. Being on and the road to Elko. Being on okay. the road to Elko, and uh, if we can get a close-up of that. Not the exact kind of picture that you remember seeing Bing Crosby wearing a headdress. And that's why we've got Carolyn here to explain this book to us because it's probably very different from most um, autobiographies that have been written about Bing. That's true, Lynn. And um, the library lists it as uh, historical slash biographical. Uh -huh. So it's a little bit of both. And uh, just as you questioned when you saw the book, what is he doing in a headdress? It's because uh, for 15 years, he was an active cattle rancher in northern Nevada. You know, with the Levi's, with the hole in the jeans, the mm -hmm. whole thing. Mm -hmm. And he just loved it. Um, he owned seven ranches uh, by the time he uh, finished. And one of them was so, so far north, it was very near the Awahi uh, tribe up there, the Shoshone Paiute tribe. Mm -hmm. And they would exchange um, ranch helpers and um, uh, farm equipment and things and became uh, good friends. And so they invited him to be an honorary member of the tribe. And that's how the headdress that's came into play. That's where the headdress yes. came from. I so think. that is an original, I mean, that's an authentic yes. Indian headdress. That's right. And um, this was in the 1950s, did you say that? This he bought his first ranch <clears throat> in 1943 mm -hmm. and had, it for, had them for 15 years. Uh, after his first wife died, my Aunt Dixie, right. uh, he and Dixie had four sons, my cousins, and um, after she died, uh, he, he felt that uh, the boys really weren't interested in ranching. He was hoping they would be and that he could, you know, pass it along to the, mm -hmm. to the, uh, to the sons, but, you know, uh, young boys. Uh, hey, yeah, I got one of those. <laughs> you can take them out of Hollywood, but you can't take Hollywood out of the boys. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. The, the well, lure was too strong, and uh, yeah. so he sold them off then. Mm -hmm. and, uh, now, you've got some interesting stories within the book itself, too, not just about the, well, the ranch is very important, but uh, some things that people might not have ever read about Bing in his life, just some of the differences, or is it just about the ranching itself? Um, I've, written, I've written two books, Lynn. The first one was titled Me and Uncle Bing. Mm -hmm. And that was about uh, my very young years as a, as a young girl. Uh, my mother and I going down to Hollywood and going to Paramount Studios, watching him make movies and visiting the rich relatives, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's all, it was a real treat. But um, as years went on, um, and I became aware of his world-renowned celebrity uh, status, um, I became more interested in following uh, his career and what he was doing. And ultimately, when I graduated from college, uh, which he uh, put me through, um, in the drama department, I wanted to go into show business. So he brought me to Hollywood, and I was a contract player at Paramount Studios for a year, which I loved, but then moved on from there. Mm -hmm. And um, But keeping track and in touch and visiting uh, Bing and uh, the boys you know, frequ as frequently as we could, my mother and I. But then after the first book, uh, I mentioned the uh, ranch properties in the first book, but people were saying, I never knew that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he did that. So I thought, oh, I've got another book. And that's what it is. It starts out in Las Vegas because he went to Las Vegas frequently uh, to uh, play golf primarily. He and Desi Arnaz formulated the uh, Tournament of Champions at the Desert Inn years ago. And it went on from there, and then he would uh, uh, play golf, and um, uh, some of the boys formed a musical group, singing group, and he would go uh, watch their appearance at the Sands or wherever they were playing. Then get in the car, uh, put on the jeans and the cowboy hat, and drive and up to on. Elko. Oh my goodness to, gracious. Uh, but while there, again, um, because he was such a kind of regular guy, you know, mm -hmm. very relaxed, laid back, uh, he was welcomed into the community to the point where they made him honorary mayor of Elko. Wow. And uh, this would be like 50, 51, around in there. And then he brought in a um, movie premiere of a film that he'd made recently entitled Here Comes the Groom. Mm -hmm. And they uh, talked Paramount, he talked Paramount, I should say, 
into doing a movie premiere in Elko, not New York. Oh, Elko, wow. That's Nevada, amazing. Say. I mean, I, I think a lot of us have probably driven through Elko, and it's, uh, you know, not that much to see. It hasn't changed that much. No, now. no. And at that time, as I was doing my research, I learned that plane loads of reporters were flying into Elko to cover this event of the premiere, and so the local people were getting in their cars and driving out the airport to drive people back into town. Oh you know, there, was, there was no taxi service or, or anything. So it was real small town living. I was gonna say and that had to be exciting for the community oh, and oh, yeah. um, probably he helped the community uh, with a little bit of the economy there with what he's done. Well, the uh, legal mayor at the time was uh, Dave Dada and after all the hullabaloo was over, uh, Mayor Dada was quoted as saying, Bing Crosby put Elko on the map. Wow. Now I must add then, do they have any kind of a, uh, memo not a memorial, but like a little museum to, in Elko that uh, talks about the, you that You would time? ask me that? You okay. would ask me that. Well, you know, that might give everybody a chance to drive on up to Elko and find out, you no. know, it might be kind of fun. No, not anymore. But uh, you, your life sounds fascinating too. Um, you know, being you obviously were close to that side of the family. You said you you and your mother. Yeah, my mother was Bing's sister. Okay. And there were seven in the family. Wow, and, big family. Uh, yes, I was. And uh, the youngest was Uncle Bob, uh -huh. who was Bob Crosby and the Bobcats. Right. Now, you're right. too young to know this. but Well, no, I know these things because my parents, you know, mm. I come from also family in the business. So you kind of, you know, you you grow up teething on that you mm -hmm. know so you know these names you've seen the shows you, you, so i think that's great it's interesting the gentleman you were uh, intervie interviewing just prior to myself mentioned the modern airs mm -hmm. and um when uncle when i was in la uh, uncle bob had a tv show every day at noon and his um regulars were the modern airs with paula kelly oh my goodness <laughs> so uh, uncle bob asked me if i wanted to be on the show sometime, do a little bit, and I go, oh, sure. So uh, Alan Copeland, who was uh, part of the Modern Airs, he did a skit with me. Oh, fun. And um, it was a record shop, and he'd say, do you have any Bing Crosby records? And i reach under the shelf and go, <laughs> blowing off the dust. <laughs> and he said, well, you know, what? where did you get that? And I said, well, it's out of the Smithsonian Institute. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm sure Uncle Bing liked that one. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, it was fun. It was fun. I bet and then it was. They, they talk about his racehorses and that uh -huh. never won and the old nags. Right. And we had a picture of the horse on the wall. Uh -huh. And as soon as we said Bing, Uncle Bing's horse, the picture falls off the wall. It's just it's all fun, fun stuff. stuff really so, how did it. you get into writing then? Uh, just... As a senior citizen, talk about young at heart. Mm -hmm. um, I was over the <clears throat> certain age. <clears throat> we won't mention that. When I started writing. <laughs> And um, I've done some articles for the Bing Magazine, um, which is a fan magazine published out of England uh, okay. three times a year. So I've been writing some articles for them. I'm now writing a senior article for the Boulder City Review and oh, the Reno Gazette Journal. So I'm going to talk to the Paro Valley Times. Paro. Parum. Parum. I do that all the time. I, it's that senior thing. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> Uh, there was a, a, a Pajaro where I used to live many years ago um, about hopefully getting the, the article in here. I'd oh, love that would be to, fabulous. love to do it, yes. yeah. And, um, and what is the article? It's just senior notes it's seniors. About... It's called Senior Class. Okay. And I don't discuss anything negative, like Absolutely. Alzheimer's and cancer. We know that it's there, and I see no point in talking about it. There's so many articles that are doom and gloom for seniors, you know. And then why do you do that to One us? One fellow writes in the newspaper, how to pick a wheelchair that's right for you. Oh, come on. <laughs> You know. No, I'm I'm along with you because I've been reading a lot and researching articles for our show, being that that's the mm. title of it. And there's so many great articles out there about how to keep your marriage young and at heart, and you mm. know all the little tips you can do to keep that going, or um, just health issues that are uh, fun things to do for your, you know, like you want to be a little sprighter or whatever, then you know pick a fruit. Or, it, it, I could go on and on, but I think you're right. That's, we just need to do that. More positive input, positive. I think, yes. Because positive feeds positive equals ends out positive. Right, absolutely. So yes. I stay busy and I love doing it. Research is kind of the best part. 
Well, I, I hate to cut it short, but um, go out and read this book. It's fascinating, and I'm sure that it's available. No, 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 no. Oh, See, God, we, we should have talked about this. One. We should have. <laughs> My publisher is out of copies, so the only way to get it right now is from me. All right, and we'll give you that information at the end of the show. Thank you, Carolyn, for joining us. My pleasure.